Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And I also like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guests, Sandra and Steve Drennings. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, and angel oracle cards to assist you in re remembering why you are here your spiritual path and clarity on the next steps to take. I also offer a multidimensional virtual, virtual retreat, several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence, and I run various workshops. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guests, Sandra and Steve Jennings, about connecting for change, a continuation and update from a previous show, Every Drop Creates the Ocean. Now, Sandra is a quantum energy healer working with light language, a soul mentor, regression therapist, channeled artist, the founder of Blue Pool Network. Now, Blue Pool Network has a huge vision to connect light workers, therapists, spiritual entrepreneurs, and anyone who is consciously aware of their spiritual path. The aim is to create a community collaboration, assistance and support through their spiritual journey with healings, programs, online courses, webinars, and an online directory of holistic businesses. Now, Sandra will be updating us on what has been going on with this vision and how it is now ready to launch and start the connection for change. Steve will be telling us about his journey from the corporate world to a life-changing accident where he was in the blue, blue pool to birth to the birth of Blue Pool Network, a truly inspiring and heartfelt story. When we bring a diverse range of gifts and talents together, we are so much stronger. Supporting each other to flourish and grow is the next step to seeing change we all so deeply long to see. So without further delay, hello, Sandra and Steve, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello. Hello, Ray. Hello, Ray. Um, yeah, we're very well, thank you. Yeah, very good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for inviting us on. Oh, you're more you're more than welcome. Um, you know, last time you were here and you were talking about um, Blue Pool Network um, and what your, you know, the aims for it, it sounds really good. And the fact that Steve's story is so inspiring, it's like, oh, let's see if we can get Steve on and actually <laughs> um, he can tell his story and his experience. Um, for it. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can ask, also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts. As Sandra, Steve and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please don't be shy. So Sandra and Steve, why don't you tell us more about your journeys with Blue Pool and how every drop creates the ocean and brings about that connection for change? So I think, first of all, it would probably be a good idea to explain, to, to hand over to Steve, for him to explain exactly where the concept behind Blue Pool came from. Um, because there was a, as you just said, Steve had a really uh, serious accident about 10 years ago now, um, where he was in a coma. Um, so, and had the experience of what we, of the inspiration behind Blue Pool. So I'll just let Steve explain all of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so this is the first time that I've done this um, live, and um, if I get a bit emotional, you'll have to forgive me. Um, Absolutely fine. It's, um, it is. It is. It is still kind of. Um, yeah, it is just an emotional thing to to talk about. But um, okay. So um, basically, I, I've lived um, a, a, a kind of big, expansive life, travelled all over the world, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, both. You know, from a corporate perspective and personally, um, I was uh, on on the day that the accident happened. Um, I just had some amazing news. I'd been awarded a, a contract that I was delighted with, um, and um, that that was towards the end of the working day. Um, the the accident um, when that happened, my last memory was um, about twenty minutes before, um, and then. 
um, I was crossing the road in um, central London um, and was hit by a, a London taxi, um, which are hard, uh, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> they're fairly solid. And um, yeah, the um, the impact was, um, uh, so I, I was kind of set up in here by the taxi. The impact um, was uh, basically with, with the floor. Um, so I hit the tarmac uh, there, effectively. Um, and um, it was severe. So I, I had what the, um, the doctors would call a, a severe traumatic brain injury. So in kind of practical terms, if you imagine a sledgehammer smashing a pumpkin, that's what happened. Mm. Um, so the breaks were right the way through to this side of my skull, the whole, the whole of my brain and kind of, you know, whatever uh, was pushed um, to, to one side. The, the fortunate bit is that um, I was very, very close to, the accident happened very close to um, St Mary's Hospital in Paddington. Um, they are um, the leading specialists in brain surgery. Okay. Um, and um, so, um, you know, uh, I firmly believe that if um, the accident ha hadn't happened there, that I wouldn't be here now. Um, the, and the, um, the top neurosurgeon uh, there was on duty that day. Um, he was the one who um, operated on me, um, and um, they, they conducted maxiofacial, so re rebuilt my face at the same time as doing the neurosurgery. Um, the none, none of which clearly I was <laughs> I wasn't aware of any of that. That's the practical stuff. Um, coming back to kind of what um, my awareness. So my last kind of physical awareness was twenty minutes before the accident. What I, what I then experienced was um, being separate to my body, but being um, still um, in a way connected to it. So it was quite a classic scene that you, you kind of see represented, you know, quite broadly in, you know, um, films and whatever, um, where um, I, I was kind of uh, above my body. I could see everything that was going on around it. Um, and that started when I was in the um, ambulance and the ambulance was screeching to a halt at the A&E in um, at St. Mary's and the doors crashed open. Um, the um, paramedics were shouting um, and but basically for everyone to clear out the way. Um, you know, two sets of doors, bright lights, everyone scuttling out, out of the way. Um, so that, that was kind of the beginning and end of that scene if you like that was kind of um very much embedded in my in my head um in my memory uh, what happened next was completely different to that um it was I, I went into um went into sounds like i actually remember the journey from one to the other which i don't it's just i became aware that i was in a place of complete bliss um by uh by bliss the, the it's really hard to describe because um we've got our five senses by which i can kind of try and describe it where i was was so different to that it, it's um and we've got kind of our you know our language to try and describe it and our senses to try and describe it by but but kind of where i was was so completely different but you, so you can only do your best to kind of describe it but um to to try and give um give the best description that i can it felt like I was um, kind of submerged within a really viscous um, density of kind of liquid. So not to make any effort to support myself. Um, it was body temperature. Um, it was light. Um, but just uh, this, this this whole feeling of um, being almost like wrapped in a snuggly blanket and pure love, being surrounded by pure love, uh, if that makes sense. So um, the my my awareness then um, kind of began to grow. Um, but you weren't aware of yourself as Steve anymore. At that no, point. no, 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 yeah. no. So so there, there was no Steve. There, there was just. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you would call it. I, it, uh, I was just there, consciousness, yeah. awareness, just, just yeah. an awareness. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so, so there was no Steve. Um, what, I, what I became aware of um, was that um, the the warmth and the light actually wasn't. Uh, it, it it was me. 
it's like if you can imagine being un underwater in the sea and looking up and you see the sun shining down it's like the, the light is separate to you but you're experiencing it yeah. coming to you and it, it wasn't that it was the opposite way around um so which is kind of to me quite profound in its own sense if that makes sense um the the, the next bit was that um I, I became aware that the my um that, that I, it that there wasn't just me that actually there was that there was a um I could connect um, and be aware of the connection um, to, to what I can only, uh, the, the best words I can use to describe it is to, to a broader collective consciousness. And the, um, that was limitless. Um, and that actually once I became uh, aware of that, um, the, the 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 awareness that you, you you could you can actually move with it and through it um simply through um intention um so it's not like you've got to you know uh, walk there or get on a plane and go <laughs> do you know what i mean it's um it's like it, it's it's all it, it was all there um and again the, the, our, our senses don't do it justice but to kind of bring it into a physical sense uh, that, that we uh, to use our senses as we would know them as we know them to, to try and create a picture in in everyone's minds as to what what this what this was like is if you imagine kind of traveling around the globe and experiencing different cultures with different you know scenery and different tastes and different uh, all, all the all the things that you get when you go somewhere and immerse yourself in a culture for three months for example and you come back and you've it's hard to describe it because you've just immersed yourself completely within it. Um, so yeah, that, but in a kind of so much more than that, yeah. and, uh, and not in a not in a physical uh, not in a physical sense, more um, energetic. Um, but yeah, that very much the ability to actually uh, kind of um, experience all of the all of these things, and um, so I. I I was at the point of um, almost like starting to explore, um, and I, I then got to a point of um, a, a realization that I, I just not. I became aware of a a, a, a sense of responsibility, um, which is um, a bit strange because I, Steve didn't it still didn't exist. It, you know, I wasn't aware of Steve, but that I, I was aware that there was a sense of responsibility, and it was that um, it was almost like unfinished business is a better way to yeah. put it, um, and um, it was that that um, so almost like literally as soon as that became it, uh, it, as soon as as soon as my awareness of that became present, it wasn't really a decision to come back; it just happened. So it, yeah, I didn't sit there kind of pondering. All you know, I didn't get my to, my pros and cons list. Of do I, don't, I don't know. It was just that there was an it, there was an awareness, and so it, it it kind of happened. And then the the journey started to actually um, go in reverse. Uh, going go in reverse. It wasn't the same path back as it was the same, uh, going. If that makes sense, the the actual way back was quite traumatic. Um, it's um, yeah, uh, I, I I experienced. Um, it's almost it, it, the best way to describe it is like if you can imagine um, films, stories, if you like, that are metaphors of trauma that you've experienced in your life, but kind of condensed into. Um, it was actually three three um, three kind of stories, if you like two of which I'm, I've got a really clear memories of. One of them a bit more kind of is a little bit more phasey in my, in my head. Um, but kind of collectively, they um, represented, um, uh, you know, all, all the trauma that, um, uh, that I'd experienced in my life to, to, to that point. Um, and it is, it is quite deep. It is, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit gnarly um, in uh, they they were they felt like they lasted an eternity each one, 
and each one ended in my demise. Um, but I had to accept, it was at the point at which I, um, because I'm a bit bloody minded, don't know if you mind me saying that on the show. No, but anyway. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, it, I didn't go easily kind of thing. But um, when I got to the point that I was accepting, accepting of the fact that this was my end, it, it then went on to the next one. The point of surrender. The point of surrender. Yeah, mm. it then went on to the next one and then the next one. Um, but each of them felt like an eternity in their own right. Um, and then um, it would. I was I was then um, in the ICU um, where clearly I was being cared for during the coma, and um, the the first kind of uh, sense that I had wasn't visual; it was audio. Uh, you know, I could hear. I, I could hear um, what was going on in the ICU um, room, um, and the kind of the the, the discussions that were going on the care that was being given etc so um I, I it's almost like i could tune into a radio and listen to what was going on um and it was clear that it wasn't you know i wasn't in a great state um but the, the fact that i was aware of it that none of this was was showing on the monitors or anything because that you would i, I would have been able to tell by the discussions that, yeah. that were going on um so so in, in my physical body nothing was changing but I could hear it, um, and um, yeah. Uh, then it kind of uh, we yeah. I I I then got I was then back to my kind of physical self. There, there, there's when you come out when you kind of come out of um, that kind of uh, physical state, you do have hallucinations, and um, but I'm very clear in terms of the difference between the hallucinations that I was having, which is. You're partly the, due to the drugs that they yeah. put you on and, uh, and whatever. So yeah, I, I know after the, the, everything that I've just um, kind of relayed here, um, that there were periods when I was kind of coming down off drugs and uh, whatever, um, that I, where, where I, I was having hallucinations. But what I've just described to you, I, yeah, I'm absolutely certain were not hallucinations. Um no. Which the doctors would have me believe they were. <laughs> but, but that's 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 doctors, isn't it? You know, I, I, I mean, if, if you read so many stories about people that have had these near death experiences, etc., they all said the same thing, and you know, and they would have been given different drugs and stuff. So it can't yeah. it can't be. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that the first part of Steve's coma when he was in that place of bliss, we always just referred to as the blue pool so that's just how we used to talk before blue pool ever came about whenever we were talking about it and we had lots of conversations because steve and i met a year after the accident okay um and uh and we used to have lots of conversations about um what had happened and i think when, when steve and i first met um i think you nobody you'd, you'd not spoken to anybody who did, had said anything other than you just it was a dream you didn't actually experience anything but then because of my perceptions of my beliefs, as soon as Steve told me, I was like, no, 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 that, that's definitely not yeah. a hallucination. Um, and so we started to explore it more. And so we, we always used to refer to what refer to it as the blue pool and without any understanding then as to what was to come. And um, it's, it's, it sort of evolved over time. And we, we, we worked together, we ran an estate agents together. And, um, but unfortunately, Steve um, started to have seizures. And actually, in some of his seizures, he's also had some really interesting experiences of things like light codes coming in and um, um, hearing pieces of music where he couldn't we couldn't move from beginning to end. And oh, there's one story we'll tell you, which is a which was incredible. Actually, it was a real superhuman stuff that you just mm. wouldn't believe it if you didn't experience it. So I'll let Steve tell you what we were, I'll, I'll set the background and then let Steve tell you what had happened. So we were having some building work done and um everything was in a real pickle and i was inside the house upstairs trying to clear out a bedroom or something that because we, we were having to pack everything up the whole the whole house was being completely gutted and an extension built on the side and steve was outside at the front of the house digging because basically we had to have the gas um supply moved so he was digging a hole just so that um when they came along they could do this gas supply um but 
he obviously wasn't having a particularly good day and I hadn't quite twigged it, but this hole was, it was like he was digging to Australia. <laughs> so, um, and um, so you were down there for ages, but I was inside doing what I was doing. And then um, the first I knew was when Steve came upstairs and often what happens if he's having a seizure is he loses his speech. And so he's standing in the bedroom door, went to speak and I went, oh, you're having a seizure. So, but by this time something, it had already happened and he was sort of coming out the other side of it. But it wasn't a full, um, um, what are the, the sort of completely unconscious seizures where, um, uh, yeah, where he completely lost consciousness. He was able to take himself to a seat, experience what he experienced, and then and then able to sort of get back up again and um, and come up to me to tell me. Um, but there was something quite incredible that happened. So I'll hand, hand it over to Steve to explain the, the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. So um, the, the the seizure clearly started while I was digging this hole. And I was digging in the wrong place, which is a bit of a clue that I wasn't thinking straight. Um, and we've got um, uh, uh, the ground uh, where we are is um, strewn with um, uh, ragstone. But some some of them are, are uh, some of the rag, rag, uh, pieces of ragstone are enormous. Um, and um, digging in the wrong place, I'd come across this piece of ragstone um, and become obsessed with getting it out of the ground. I clearly didn't need to because that's not where the hole needed to be. But I became obsessed with doing that and um, managed to get uh, the, get it to a point where I could get some sort of um, uh, leverage on it. And um, I clearly thought that it was a, a great idea to get my hand underneath it so that I, I could lift it up. Anyway, I've got my hand underneath it and my hands got trapped. And... Um, you, you know, you, you, when you're in those situations, you just take a deep breath and you know that the only way to to sort this is to kind of um, take the pain. So I, I did and I whipped my hand out and that was what caused the start of the um, start of the seizure. Um, the So clearly I went into the seizure, came out the other end of the seizure, um, still kind of physically in um, in okay shape other than I'd had, I'd had the seizure. Um, but the and this is the um, incredible thing is that the piece of ragstone that I'd um, I'd been working on was now out of the ground and had been moved across the building site to the other side of it, which was all um, you know the, the, there was uh, foundations that were being laid. It was it was rough. It wasn't you know this this wasn't um, easy to navigate. And um, where the old garage used to be was where the kind of pile of rubble that the builders were kind of building up um, was, was being put um, and now perched on the side of that was this massive piece of ragstone um, and to give you an idea of the scale of it the, the builders for the rest of the time that they were doing the job couldn't move it wow. um, and we, we ended up having to get um, we needed a, um, a grab lorry in at the end of the job when we were doing the drive, driveway um, and the grab lorry took away that piece of rock Okay, so so it, it, anyway, it gives you an idea as to so not only had I got it out of the ground, uh, uh, I somehow managed to move it across to uh, to this. Um, it, it was about what twenty foot, would you say? Yeah, that I, I'd moved it. I think the the interesting point with all of that is that when we have we have our human perception. So when Steve's um, the accident when the accident happened it was all of his um it's the left frontal lobe that's been mostly affected which is all of our processing and our human the, the very sort of male side and processing mm -hmm. side um and what that just goes to show is that there is no limitation apart from the perception that we have and when that part of our brain is suddenly taken out of the equation and the other part is able to just work freely <laughs> There's no limitation. You haven't got that perception of that's a heavy rock, so therefore I can't lift it. So in that space, when that part of Steve's brain wasn't functioning, he was able to literally pick it up and move it because time and space and energy worked very differently. So it was just such a proof of that. It was absolutely such a phenomenal experience. And I'm not exactly the world's strongest man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can tell. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like I was just looking because Steve came up to me. Was like, "You've got to come and see. You've got to come and see." And I was saying to him, "You just need to sit down. You're having a seizure." But he was like, "You've got to come and have a look." So we were, so he dragged me outside. And I was like having a real panic, thinking, "What on earth is going on?" And it was phenomenal what had happened. But but yeah, it just goes to show how much our 
um, how much we don't understand about the way that our, we, we, we limit ourselves with our perceptions um, based on our conditioning and what we our understanding of gravity and our understanding of our reality. Yeah. Um, and um, but actually, you know, who knows? Because what we do know is that the truth is not what we perceive it to be. So it was just a real it was a real confirmation of that, which was incredible. That, that that is that is that is amazing, and no Weetabix involved. No, exactly. No, <laughs> no spinach, <Yeah>. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I eat a lot of spinach, by the way. You do eat a lot of spinach, but I don't think it was that. No, <laughs> so. you definitely don't look like Popeye. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um. So yeah. So it's been it's been an interesting journey. So we 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 worked together for quite some time, and then because of the se- the seizures stress was building and building in terms of the ability for Steve to continue at the pace that we were at when we were working at the estate agents because it was very stressful yeah um and um so we were actually up in London and we were doing a, a Paul McKenna weekend workshop Paul McKenna and Richard Bandler and um because Steve was thinking at the time of being sort of transferring and becoming a, a coach um which didn't happen because halfway through, like literally it was a two day event and literally it was that evening about six o'clock when this seizure started in London. Um, And he ended up having something called status epilepticus, ended up back that night in ICU um, with looping seizures and they had to um, shut his brain down in order to try and stop the looping activity. And um, uh, then from his hospital bed when Steve was saying, when we're back in work next week, and I was like, no, we can't keep doing this. And then because you've got, and I've been having this real, like pulled it within me, knowing there was something I needed to do, but you don't know what it is at that point. I knew that I was, I, it was something to do with my spiritual path. And I knew I needed to work in that way. Didn't know what that looked like, but you know, you just have that, yeah. that something inside you that knows that something needs to shift because you've got something important to do. Um, and um then as if that wasn't enough, because he still wasn't listening, they gave him sepsis as well. So he got sepsis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the universe is, is always going exactly. to So if the bang on the head, looping seizures and sepsis and meningitis that he'd had a couple of years before as well. So there's all of these things kept on happening um, in order for, I think, to get us to the point where it was like, you need to stop and change and there's something else that you need to do, but you need to be present to be able to do it. And that's when um, we came out of hospital, Steve came out of hospital. And at that point I said, right, I need to work out what it is I'm going to do. I don't know what it's gonna be, but we can't do this anymore. And so I knew that I needed to start to do a lot of inner work to be able to work in integrity with what, whatever it looked like. And it was through that process that um, I started to come across all of these incredible people and realize the disconnect between them all. Um, and thought, wouldn't it be, we were actually in Glastonbury and um, we were just chatting things through and I said, wouldn't it be amazing if we could create something where all of these people came together and we could start to, you know, the awareness of as as one of us doing the work that we want to do has so much impact when we shine our light um, and the raising of the frequency, fre- frequency and consciousness. But when we come together, that magnifies exponentially. So, if we want, if we're on this ascension pathway, and if, if we're all on this trajectory from going from third dimensional reality to fifth dimensional reality, you know, however we perceive that, the more that we come together as a collective, the more that we can facilitate that change. Whether that's in person, whether it's online, it doesn't matter how we do it. It's just our energy is connecting. Because whether it's physical or whether it's you know digital, yeah. we're still coming together energetically. It doesn't actually matter Especially particularly. About it's about the amplification right. of the energy. And so, and we sort of, so we were sort of talking about it at the time and um, Steve at that point was sort of thinking about, we were still thinking that Steve would come to a point of being able to um, really involve himself in in all of this. But actually, as it turned out, we've realized that the the um, things carried on, that the seizures carried on. And so we know that sort of from a stress perspective, Steve supports me, but I knew that I needed to take this forwards. Yeah. Um, and um, so it was, it was then at that point that I was trying to work out, well, what could we call this? What should we do? What should we? And we didn't want to actually call it something that has any perspective that somebody had a preconceived idea of what it could be. Um, because there are so many things that we call things that the minute you hear it, you know that it's, you have your own perception of yeah. what it is. And it was a really bizarre thing. We've spent about two weeks of sort of going around in circles with names going, no, no. And literally it was given. And I just said, I want to call it Blue Pool. 
and I didn't even know where it came from. I was like, oh, we're calling it Blue Ball. <laughs> Right. So, Steve then looked on the sort of company lists and domains and everything and Blue Paul was gone to a swimming pool company obviously, obviously. Um, and um, but Blue Paul Network was available and it seemed like such an obvious connection because it is about you know networking can be perceived as you know networking for business but actually we are a network we are as a collective we are a network of energy we're an energetic network when we come together so Blue Pool Network is not network for networking. Yeah. It's network because of the connection. It's about so it made perfect sense. And um interestingly, I had a, a reading with somebody um who was able to sort of connect in and he said that the the sense of responsibility that Steve felt or the sense of, of unfinished business was to come back to bring this experience through to create this connection, create the understanding, and to support me through the ability to to bring forwards that that mission and so it's that's so it's so interesting when you hook it all together and you yeah. see how it's the universe has woven this path for us to experience all these exactly. different things um and um and so that's when blue pool was born excellent yeah i just uh, you know and it's all these synchronicities and everything just flowing together and although at the time it seems really bad and whatever when you actually look back mm -hmm. you go okay well this all happened for a reason because there was a, you know, a higher purpose that, yeah. that, that, yeah. that, that was going, that was going to take place. So you've created Blue Pool Network. Um, mm. So what, what then? <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got this well, idea in this, uh, you know, in this vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been a really interesting few years because this was all just, so this was sort of birthed conceptually around the September prior to lockdown. Um, and so did the first two events, um, I think it was January and February, and then the third one was about to start and then we had to cancel it because of COVID. Yeah. And it was really interesting because the first two events were um, in the same place we're actually starting this the, the next one, which is Bradbourne House in East Morling, and the launch date for the next one is, a, is the 14th of September. But when we ran those first two, um, it was... Um, it was fabulous because then at that point there was no infrastructure behind it it was just me phoning people that i thought would be interested and saying let's all get together let's just see what happens and i had this um room full of people and it was absolutely phenomenal because there was so the the freak the vibration there was so high it was um it was such an incredible day that amplified as the day went on it was and we initially I, I think i tried to structure it so that it was a you know you want to over give in that first time yeah. of doing something and you're trying to make sure that everybody's occupied but actually everybody just wanted to chat everybody wants just to connect talk about what they do um they wanted to talk about how they could support each other it was such a beautiful experience because um since then and there was about 80 people at each event or thereabouts um and since then i think that just about everybody who was there i've kind of stayed connected with and the amount of referrals collaborations connections and friendships that were built from just those two events has it's been incredible and i can see how so much has has evolved from just those connection points so then of course the third one was about to happen and i just got this real you know we get that internal message and i was sort of thinking what's going to happen now i thought we were about to do this and then this and the message i got was don't worry about it it's not going to be what you think it's going to be and so it was almost like that. That was the taster to show this is give you a dip of your toe in the water. Now you're going to have a couple of years to work out exactly what this is going to be. Yeah. And then I went through on a huge journey when my light language came in and I started channeling artwork. And so it was like my personal journey started to evolve because although um, I was able to facilitate Blue Paul in one respect, I also was looking around me and seeing all those amazing people and didn't necessarily see myself as a therapist yeah. alongside them because I'd been an estate agent. And although I'd done Reiki years ago and, and angel healing, I'd never actually practiced it. I'd never done it. I'd done it more so for my own journey rather than as a practitioner. But then my, my, practitioner, my practitioner journey started um, and they enabled me to discover so much more about myself and to really evolve my own understandings, which enabled me to really see this from a much broader perspective as to what needed to what we needed to create. And so um, it was really probably around April this year when the vision started to 
take shape. I guess that was probably when we first spoke, when the, yeah. the concept was all there and it was in its embryonic stages of actually pulling it all together. And now we're, I would say we're now sort of 70% towards having it all pulled together with a few things about to come. So um, we've got the first physical event, as I said, which is the first one is on the 14th of September at Bradbourne House in East Morling. Um, and um, um, the, the days are going to be on the second Wednesday of every month for the particular physical events that we're running. Um, there is also online stuff to back it up, but I'll come on to that in a moment. Yeah. Um, so we've created an affiliate team. And um, actually, a lot of the people in my affiliate team are people that I met at the very early stages of Blue Pool. So it definitely was about bringing the right people together yeah. so that um, I then when I wanted to create this team, I, I knew who I could connect with. Um, and there's a whole range. And what I wanted to create was something where there were all sorts of different disciplines, because Blue Pool is not about one diff one specific thing so for example mine it's not a light language platform it's not about me it's about bringing all of these different disciplines and diversities together so that there is something for everyone and people can really shine in their own right which is where the every drop becomes the ocean or it creates the ocean is that what that's what that's all about and so i've created this affiliate team and it's a combination of um uh, therapeutic people that work therapeutically and also business support because we also know that a lot of people who are on a holistic journey me included the business side of it although I ran a business it's not there's lots of things that I just mm. it's a it's a very different animal when you're suddenly going to be looking at social media and creating your website and all that sort of stuff it's if it's not your thing um Ouch. you need to find the right <laughs> The right people but also it's about finding the, the people that who get a holistic person yeah. because not everybody does so I'm, I'm I've created a team that work from both perspectives um, and this team is continually growing so it, as, as we grow the team will grow so that as I come across somebody I think I love what you do I love your energy I love the way that you work I'd love you to just to be of support in, in in regards to what we're creating that that's what's happening so um so there's two aspects of it there's the therapeutic support and the business support um on the day there will always be um a a number of our affiliates that will be there to support and you can book in to have a chat with them and they, they may be able to support you with whatever your query is there and then or it can be something where you know if you need a website built then there's somebody there that can support you and they can talk you through that and um the lady who's supporting with the website is that lady called Marisi, and she's been phenomenal at assisting me in creating this and without her help i don't think i would have got there because she's been so patient because as this has evolved of course the concept evolves and is continually evolving and changing. So I've had to go back to the drawing board more than once and say, actually, Marissa, I've changed my mind. Can we do this? Because now, now that I've started to go down this road, it needs to be something different. And I know that when we're working in the flow, that needs to happen. So you don't want somebody who's going to give you a rigid structure of, well, that's the limit that you've told me and I can't flex from that. And it's going to cost you more money if you do this. You want somebody who's able to work with you and allow your your um vision to to grow and evolve as as you do so um so Marisi is going to be coming along so um so again it depends on what you want to it could be a mindset challenge that you're coming a block that you're coming across so there's, there are people there to support you but I wanted the day to be a cross between networking and a workshop so that you come away feeling that your soul has been nurtured and um uh, as well as um that you've got the support that you need from um from a business perspective but also that you're in the room with relevant businesses because with i mean there's there's a place for all types of networking i think it's phenomenal that you can meet all sorts of different people that can support you in all ways but it's great when you've got like like businesses together yeah. because then you can really connect with those people where you can you know you can support your clients better because um as as therapists a practitioners having a heart center business you know that you're going to come across people that need more than what you can give and so if you know that you've got this um network of people that you can call on who you know and trust that you can that can support your clients it helps you to give a better service to your clients as well so there's so many benefits to being in that space with space with like-minded people and of course then you can you're going to end up with these little sort of subgroups where people start to do workshops together and um and there's no end to then what can happen yeah. and this is all about the growth and the of, of the, how we can take this forward to support support our, our clients better and of course 
for us to grow our businesses better and be in flow. And so this is why Redborn, Redborn House was the choice. And I was shown this actually in a vision, <laughs> shown the building in a vision before I even found it. I didn't know. I was thinking, and I thought I was being shown a house I might live in. Which is a bit disappointing. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> this, this, is a, this is an 18th century, like, <laughs> like Queen Anne. <laughs> Like um, huge manor house, manor house. <laughs> and I was looking at thinking, "God, we're going to be really abundant." We're going to have <laughs> so, and then realised actually it was a venue that we were going to be finding. To oh, well, close, maybe further down the line. You never know. But um, yeah. um, but no, it was it was. I was shown this venue in two days, and I was looking then for the right space to hold the the events in. And I was also seeing white round tablecloths with white round tables with white tablecloths on. And so I knew that's what I wanted it to feel like and look like. Then we're shown this building, and then I did a search and I'd, we'd looked at loads of different places at that time. And um, um, and I just wasn't finding the right place. And I was looking, and anyway, it looked under wedding venues and it popped up and I was like, that was the place I saw. So I knew where it needed to be. Um, and so we had that's where we had the venue. So we're very guided to go back there again. Um, but it's such an amazing place. And also, the, the reason why it, it needs to be somewhere like that is that I want us to all be in a place where we can experience abundance, know that we're worthy of abundance. And so when you go to these days out, you're feeding, you're, you're nurturing your self-worth as well. So we're coming together to really support that. So um, and we've got a guest, the guest speaker at our first one is a chap called Nathan Simmons. Mm -hmm. And he is a free mind rapid change therapist. And um, we did the... Um, the lion's gate uh, activation with him and it was absolutely phenomenal um and so and I, I knew that i would suddenly come across the right person i was sort of like because there were lots of people that i was sort of had as potential sort of people that i could come to but then i sort of thought no i need to i'm just waiting 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 because i know that somebody's going to come across my path that i know is the right one so i met nathan um and asked him if he, if he would be our guest speaker so on that first day he's going to be talking about inner child release and trauma and taking us on a journey and where he connects he's going to connect us to our to our bodies on an energetic level and he uses amazing techniques to really help us to connect and release um what no longer serves us so um really good balance between the practical and the esoteric yeah. so um so hopefully it will it will really resonate with everybody in the room because it's going and he's been a leadership coach previously so he's um he's able to really work with people with their mindset in that way so it's a really supportive way of working so he's there on the first one um so that's really the sort of the sum of the first the of the events which are going to be on the second wednesday of every month um, we are looking to have different locations for in, into next year um, but initially we want to get the, the model right first of yeah. all so that we know exactly how and what we're going to be doing in terms of moving moving it out to different locations. Um, but in order to, so this is going to be a membership um, uh, platform um, event, um, but we're supporting it with the online. And so the, there's going to be an online membership as well. And the affiliate team um, are uploading content. So if you look on the Blue Pool website, um, of the Blueprint website, there is actually a library, and the library is content from our affiliates, and so it's to support in any number of ways. And the, the the idea is that this library of information is going to build and grow over time, so it becomes a free resource to anybody who comes to the website, um, which of course brings people along to. Um, if you're a therapist and you're on the directory, which we also have, it's going to bring visibility of to the website by using the by the library where there's all this this um, free resource. So that will be building over time. There's already it's already um, populated with quite a few bits of content on there but that's going to be updated regularly uh, the um, way i describe that is a, a free netflix yeah yeah effectively um, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. so um but it's all sorts of different things on there from um dealing with anxiety overwhelm um helping with um with your children if you've got children that have, are struggling with overwhelm and stress and um, coping with adhd but there's also going to be a sort of ascension support and um different uh, different um every topic you can think of that is on a holistic path is going to be supported on that over time it will build to be something that's a really co cohesive platform um so online we've got the online um business um platform um for the um, the directory and the directory is for any therapist practitioner 
um, light worker, heart centered business, sustainable business. Because if we're moving into this new earth, we want all of those businesses to be able to come together in one space so that you can see how we can all support each other in that way. So any business that is using is, is working in that way is it's that it, that's the platform that we're trying to create. Um, and in addition to that, what's coming shortly is an events listing page. So again, anybody can, can put their events on there, whether this, whether it's a regular monthly circle or whether it's a huge mind, body, spirit event, it doesn't matter. It's an events play, pl platform for that. Um, an online course platform is coming. Um, those are the bits we're still building. The other thing that we, we've got coming, which is um, which wasn't talked about when, when I first spoke to you, is something that I've just has evolved in this last couple of weeks, is something called the New Earth Technologies page because I'm coming across um, amazing people that are working in ways with different products that can really support our well-being. Um, in a, you know, there's, there's a lady that I was speaking to who's, who works with light technology patches um, and it, it encourages the renewal of stem cells. Um, so anti-aging works on all different levels. So, um, so those products, so what we're not doing is selling, we're not selling the products, but what we're doing is promoting the products. Yeah. So effectively, what I'm just asking them to do is just because we just want it all in one place, because otherwise, where do you find this stuff? Exactly. It's all scattered. Um, so the um, the information is, it would just be a, a picture of the product and then a link to the website and a, a description of the product and a link to the website where you can find out more and you can purchase the product. Um, but we, we're just trying to make this a one-stop hub of all things spiritual. But if you are not in Kent, which obviously an awful lot of people that we've been watching this aren't, um, you can actually get on, involved online because part of our membership, so you can just have an online directory listing. And for the first 500, we're launching this on the 14th of September, the same day as the um, physical event. Um, if you just want to be listed on there, the first 500 people who message me to let me know. I'm um, one of them already. You're one of them already, yes. Um, if you let me know you want to be in there, I will send you the link. And the first 500 people that fill in their profiles will actually get that for 99 pence a month for the lifetime of their um, of their listing. So unless you cancel it, you will get it for that price. After that, the cost is going to be £11.11 .11 a month um to, to have your, your your profile listed it's a really lovely it's a little bit like doing your facebook profile so you've got your cover photo you've got ability to put a gallery in there you can have all of your links so it's really a, quite a cohesive platform and on the listing you'll have your own profile page so if people find you in the list they then go in you can have all of your information will be shown on there um so if you message me um and let me know then um i will make sure that you get the link that night and then that way you can be um, a chance to be one of the first 500 to actually get that ongoing offer. The other thing that we're doing um, as part of the support, so this will be the, the in-person event, but also the online one is a premium membership if you're online. If you're in person, it will be part of the membership package of the in-person membership. But if you would like to do this online, it's a way that we can support you online. So um, a lot of our affiliates um, and myself are off we do um, monthly sessions, so Zoom sessions where we will send out a Zoom link. And if you're a member, you have access to all of these different links. So, so far, we've got Ascension access, uh, an Ascension update, Ascension guidance. I'm doing a healing. There's somebody else that's going to guided meditation. Someone else is doing a legal surgery. We have online business coaching, um, mindship, uh, mindset coaching, conscious living coaching. There's going to be a whole range of things that we're going to be, or nutrition, so whatever it's the fitness, fitness, nutrition. These groups, if if you um, belong to this membership, you will get access to all of these groups and you can drop in and out as many of the, uh, you can do all of them, which will give you a very busy month. Um, or you can drop in and out of whichever ones you like to through the process of your membership. So depending on what you're drawn to, there's something that you can go to. And as our affiliate team builds, these will build as well. Um, and what we're going to be doing with the online version of that um, is that so you can have the, the listing on its own for 99p or you can have the entire um, membership online, which is the listing plus the support of all of those groups for 11, 11 a month. And again, that's the lifetime of your membership. So um, so you won't so you will always have access to any of that unless you cancel. That's for the first five hundred. For, for the first five hundred, yeah. After yeah. that, then it's going to be the basic membership for the listing is eleven eleven. And then it's going to be for the premium listing with all of the 
um, support groups, it's going to be 2222. Including the listing. Yeah, including the listing. Yeah. yeah. I love the numbers. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, everything, <laughs> everything we're doing is 22, 22, 33, 44. <laughs> so, so it's all going up in those sorts of numbers. So, um, so yeah, so, that, so there's, there's so much more to come. Um, but for the moment, that's where we are and that's what we're offering. And it's all coming out on the 14th of September. Um, so the, the so, one bit that you haven't mentioned, what have I forgotten? Um, Bloomsbury. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so, yes. so, um, so I run a, um, if anybody's interested and a local, I also run a group, um, in Bindon, which is on the first Saturday of every month. And that's like, um, it's a, a sort of a, more like a, a, a an, it's a discovery, it's a healing meditation and, um, and connection group. And so if you're on your path, it doesn't matter whether you're um, a therapist practitioner or whether you're on your path of discovery, it's a group that you can come to and we, it's a really lovely day out and we, we do the a sort of a mini workshop in the morning and then in the afternoon we go to, we always have lunch together in the afternoon. And it's just a lovely way of building a, a again, a, a different type of community because it's all about, it, it, whatever way we come, come together, it's all about us coming together yeah. to create change in our lives, in our families' lives and and naturally that's going to have the impact it, and, and in our businesses and it's going to have the impact of changing the world around us, which is hence why we're calling it Connecting for Change. <laughs> so. Yeah, we, 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 it's absolutely perfect, you know, and it was at the beginning of this year, you know, as I was telling people, 2022 was a year of connecting and community and building mm. up. It's not a case of working by yourself anymore. Mm. That's That's been, that's, that's been and gone. It is now working in connection in conjunction with others now and that is how people mm. are going to thrive mm. Mm. it's yeah. as communities and working with others rather than yeah. just me 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 it's like the whole every everyone together so it's brilliant that this is sort of like all culminated at this time oh I think there's no there's no coincidence with that because I mean we can see with what everything that happened over this last couple of years so many more people are becoming more aware of a different way of being taking more responsibility for their own health and well-being um starting to be a more aware of a, a a spiritual path that they may not have been aware of before and so I think there's absolutely no coincidence that this is being created now because the more that people are awakening there's i mean there's the thing there is so much information out there but it's so disjointed yes. and so and it's not also and sometimes that information you don't you, you can jump into something which is so complex and you're thinking well what where do i start but what we're hoping to try and create here is really sound information for, for anybody on their path if they're dealing with whatever it is because as we probably know when you start to be aware of this you start to then start have these things starting to, get, to happen within your energy field. And so you start to have the anxiety and the, um, and you start having to do that inner work and start to have all this stuff come up. So you need that support and guidance. So what do I now do with all of this stuff? Yes, I'm yeah. aware of it. Now, how do I deal with it? And so everybody that's putting the information on the, on the library are all therapists and practitioners who are all coming from a place of um, absolutely heart centered and they work, they're working with their clients and they're doing it in a way which is supportive and, 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 a, and it's a safe environment for you to actually be able to to observe this because you want to be able to have that information in a way that is going to be safe for you to work with it and so that's the important thing with all of the affiliates is that I know that they they work with integrity and so they're able to give you the information which is going to, be, going to really support people and the more that people are coming to this place the more that they're going to need to have those tools and it's like, where do you find it? Where do you look for it? Where where do you start? And so, um, and everybody's going to have a different perspective on what on what they're needing to be drawn to. So, if there is that library of information there, and that hub of information, and all of these amazing practitioners all across the world, or or um, businesses that that are with these different products that are able to bring this new way of living in one place, then. Hopefully, then there's going to be somewhere where where, where there's a, a cohesive platform of information. Sorry, one other thing that you haven't talked about. Yes, rising stars. Oh, rising stars. <laughs> so, hopefully, the last thing. Yeah. So, rising stars is all about our um, was called Blue Ball Kids, but we decided that actually this is as much for the young adults as it is yeah. for the children, because so many teen, so many children, teenagers, and young adults are really struggling. Yes. Um, and especially with what's happened over this last couple of years, um, 
with my own journey, I've had an ex my, my, my own son had an experience of sort of mental health issues um, from when he was in his teens. But he's a he was very open, very um, really struggled with his like, mainstream. Um, and and so and it created an awful lot of sort of mental health issues for him. And the support wasn't there. The right support wasn't there at all. And it's worse now <laughs> than it was then. Um, and so if this is going to be for the for the um, children and young adults themselves to actually have information out there that can support them but it's also um, therapists who are able to work with um, with parents teachers and, and uh, children to actually give guidance so there's going to be information there for parents and teachers too um, so that there's going so the rising stars section of the library is going to be a resource specifically aimed at working with um, children teachers parents carers um, and, and young, young adults to support them with their mental health, their spiritual growth, their spiritual development, so they can start to realise that actually they're not the problem. <laughs> so, because okay. I think that's the biggest the biggest issue is that we're trying to put square pegs in round holes, um, and when those square pegs don't don't fit, and they start to have issues as a re, as a re, as a result of that, then um, where's the support? Because yeah. right right now it's not there, um, and you've got a two year waiting list and. You know, if you're waiting on the NHS waiting list for something, the results can be catastrophic, um, and we we need we are very very aware. So um, I know that the, a part of what Blue Paul will be doing and looking further down the line is also supporting charities in relation to that. Because, um, but we we know we need to get this sort of up and running first. Yeah. But that is that's because it's very close to my heart because of the experiences that I've had. Um, and I really empathise and sympathise with any parent or any child or teenager that's going through any of those sort of struggles right now. And um, and it's something that we're going to be working on to try and create a more resource um, for, for anybody who's on that path, because I know how difficult it can be. Yeah, that is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, there's so many young people and children that do feel lost now um, mm -hmm. and, and then feel that everything's their, um, their, you know, their fault and, you know, and there's no future. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, anything to help young people, children is absolutely amazing. So it's brilliant that you're including that mm -hmm. um, in, in what you're doing as well. So, so well done for doing that as, <laughs> as well. So, as you know, I do guided meditation, Sage and Oracle card readings. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do. So, Sandra and Steve, would you like me to do a mini guided meditation or would you like me to pull an angel oracle card for yourselves and those watching? What would you like? You choose. The meditation sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Meditation, please. Okay. Well, we're actually going to do both. Okay. okay. <laughs> because I, because I like doing both. <laughs> we're actually going to do the card and we'll do the guided meditation from whatever the card brings up. Okay. So, um, what does Sandra, Steve, and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? Just Steve, Sandra, and everyone. Okay, we'll go with that one. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to talk about the card just yet. So, everyone, close your eyes. And as you do so, take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Take another deep breath in and on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be here. And allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in breath, relaxing you more and more. And every out breath, just releasing everything. And as your breathing falls into its natural rhythm, just give yourself permission to relax. For when you think about relaxing, so you will relax. Give yourself permission and allow yourself to relax. And just feel that relaxation move through your whole body, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, all the way down your arms to your fingertips. And just see, feel, imagine or know a beautiful golden light above your head, a beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation. And just allow this beautiful golden light to move down into your body. And as it moves into your head, you feel the whole of your head start to relax. 
and that relaxation moves down into your brow, your temple, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your cheeks, your mouth and your jaw. As this relaxation moves down into your neck, down into your shoulders, down into your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. As this relaxation now moves into your upper body and you feel all your chest muscles start to relax, all your stomach muscles relax, the whole of your back start to relax with your spine relaxing vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae. As this relaxation moves down into your hips, your pelvis, your buttocks, your thighs, your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, your heels, your feet and your toes. And your whole body is just so relaxed. And I want you now to engage your imagination and I want you to imagine that you are standing by a beautiful pool of water and in the middle is a beautiful island with a wonderful castle on it, a castle of your own design and making and it's a beautiful night sky with beautiful shining stars and a brilliant moon just shining down. And you can hear night insects, feel a night breeze, it's a warm, gentle evening. And you can smell the night air. You can hear the rustle of the leaves on the trees nearby. And it just feels so amazing. And in front of you is a boat, a boat that is going to take you across to the island. So step onto that boat now. And as you do, you feel so safe, secure and supported. And in front of that boat is a lamp just lighting your way. But with the moon shining down on this pool of water, and the light is so beautiful and magical. And there's fireflies just flitting here and there. And as you step into the boat, you notice there's nothing for you to use to steer it. There's no oars. There's no motor. This is a boat that you need to surrender to control to. This boat is the boat that's going to take you on the journey. Maybe the journey is going to take you straight to the castle. Maybe it's going to take you around the castle to somewhere else. It's time for you to surrender to that journey. Release control. So settle down in the boat and just release control. And as you do, the boat starts to move. And I'm going to leave you now for a moment or two as that boat just goes across the pool. Surrender to where it is taking you, whether this beautiful castle or somewhere else. Just enjoy the ride as you surrender to the journey and release control. And see what wisdom or guidance may come to you on this journey when you get to the destination.
if your boat has reached the castle, then you can step out of the boat and walk up to the castle to see what you'll experience. If your boat is still going, that's absolutely fine. It's just taking you on a beautiful journey. And if your boat has taken you somewhere else, then step out of that boat now and go and explore that place. What wisdom insides that castle, that place, or just being on that boat and that pool giving you? And allow that information to flow to you. Thoughts, pictures, words, sounds, colours, or just knowing. It's your journey. And as this is just a short mini meditation, it's almost time to come back. So just take a moment for any last information, last energy to come to you now. And now it's time to come back. So I'm going to count from one to five. When I get to five, you will be back fully present, remembering your whole journey. So coming back now, one, coming further back two, all the way back three, remembering your journey, all the way back four, five, wiggle fingers, toes, move your body, open your eyes, stretch if you need to, and welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. And everyone watching, just take your time, get yourself back, you know, and do put in the comments, you know, if you're happy to, what you experienced, where your journey was, or, um, you know, because when we share, it helps trigger memories of other things that might have gone in, in our own journey, but it also cements it into the here and now by sharing that journey. That sharing that journey. So I don't know if Sandra and Steve, you want to share your journey at all? Do you want to share? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. happy. Yeah, go on. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I started off with um, a, a clear uh, picture of, you know, a beautiful lake. Uh, the, 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 there was a castle in the middle that was kind of fortified, if you like, so um, had really uh, strong walls, or, um, and it was square. And then in the middle was this square castle. So it looked like the sort of place that you'd want to live. Um, but... Um, you know, an amazing, amazing setting, but quite, um, quite stark. Um, uh, and um, uh, but my boat didn't go there. Um, it went straight off down uh, the other end of the uh, lake and didn't actually get anywhere near the castle. Um, and there was kind of the uh, the uh, water uh, um, flowed out of the um, out of the lake, um, and um, rapids were next. So clearly in a boat with no oars or steering, you're at the mercy of whatever comes on. And at the end of the rapids, and this is just my life in general, was a waterfall. So I've gone over the waterfall, <laughs> out, of the, out of the boat, and um, into, you know, a pool down the, down the bottom. But this now is, this is paradise. This is um, uh, Amazonian is probably the best way I can describe it. Um, all the resources that you can um, imagine, everything that you could possibly need, perfect um, kind of climate. Every, every there was just nothing not to like, um, and um, and then um, clearly the kind of 
me um, making a big noise and whatever had um, stirred up the locals. So the locals started to come out of the undergrowth and whatever, and but they were really friendly. And uh, anyway, everything was just um, incredible. So going from this, actually, what was quite um, uh, quite cold and grey, but beautiful in, in its own right, and ending up in this um, vibrant, colourful, warm, um, friendly um space yeah, yeah anyway perfect beautiful mm. <laughs> Sandra? um yeah it was quite interesting actually because what what i was finding was that so when you said to picture the castle i had this very fairy tale rainbow like glass castle that was all very you know, just just beautiful um and um and it was really interesting because then i got in the boat and my boat didn't have any any it didn't have any before even before you said about the controls it didn't have any anyway and um and so I was sitting in there but I was finding myself fidgeting all over the place and so I didn't want to sit down stand up I was just didn't quite know what to do and then I'd then I'd find myself keep getting to the castle because I was I was like there in an instant and then I'd get out but then I'd find myself back at the beginning again so I kept on having this journey of backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and I kept on thinking, okay, there's got to be something significant about this. <laughs> so the, the message that came up was, um, was enjoy the journey. You're already at the destination. You don't need to get anywhere. <laughs> it's already there. Just enjoy the present moment. Perfect. And that was it. So it was, uh, but it took me a while of going backwards and forwards, going, why do I keep going backwards and forwards? <laughs> Releasing control. Releasing control, exactly. It was releasing control, being in the flow and um, just allowing and not being continually have this when I get here, when this happens, when, because especially with what, what I'm creating at the moment with deadlines and things like that, you've got this permanent point in the future that you're you're working towards, but it actually makes the present quite difficult to navigate um, because you're always worried you're never going to get <laughs> to the future because in time to get everything done, etc. And so it was about relinquishing the control of, of that um, and just enjoying the process, being in the present with it, rather than being continually worried about the point in the future. So it was amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And again, you know, everyone, please do put in the comments on um, how your journey. So the card that came out, which is why life was so apt with what we were talking <laughs> about and what happened with her own Steve was surrendering to the journey really <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> uh, you, you know that that's how the universe the angels yeah. you know multi it, it, that's how it all works and it all works out um ab absolutely perfect mm. with um everything that we need um at that at that particular time Shouldn't be surprised, but it can't. That sounds help. like we it's, rehearsed that. No, I know. <laughs> I know. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like this is this is this is why I love um, you know, doing doing the work that, that we do. This is why I like the collaborations and everything, because it just all intermingles and creates mm -hmm. such an amazing energy that just flows in synchronicities. Mm. Um it's it's just yeah, it's just it's just ju just is no no words to des describe it so do either or both of you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers anything you'd like to say let me have a moment i i i hope that uh, the the um the i hope you can tell that that um saying what i've said here is not something that i've kind of broadly um you know put out there it, it, we felt like we did need to put a, um, a, um, a brief explanation on the website, uh, which we have now. Um, but actually speaking uh, about it is um, it's not something that I've done um, previously. Um, so, you know, I, I, I hope it's um, given people some, you know, some things to, I don't know, gain some inspiration from, um, provoke some thoughts. Um, give some perspectives um it's you know I, i've tried to read quite um you know uh, to find stuff and the, the, there's a, a lady anita morjani um and um uh, dr even alexander are the two if you kind of if this has sparked some interest they, they've both got books that explain um their uh near-death experiences 
everything else that I've, I've found has been um, a little bit kind of almost like the, the the first phase that I talked about, which is a bit of an outer body experience and then back in again, but not deeper. So the only two that I found that would really um, go into more more deep experiences were those two. So um, yeah, if if it sparks an interest, those two are worth a look. Beautiful, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so just to, I guess, just to say that um, we really hope that what we do, or what we do, what, what I've been doing, and that the inspiration that um, Steve has given me really helps others to want to connect, you know, whether that's with us or whether that's on their, in their own way with their own groups of people, because in order for us to move forwards in a way uh, into the new reality that we're creating, the most important thing is for us to connect with each other from the heart. And and I feel so guided and so blessed in doing this um, and so grateful to all of the people that are, are trusting me to do this, the affiliate team that have actually sort of put my put their faith in me to create something. Um, and just hope that this is going to be something that can help and inspire others to, to, co to connect in their own way because it is it's fundamental to how we shift and change, trusting ourselves, finding our our soul tribe, our soul families, our um, the people that resonate with us, um, and not being afraid to speak our truth and being our truth, and um, and move forward from that place from the heart. And if we can all live from that space, then then the future looks bright, despite what appearances may seem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So just, just turn the mainstream news off. Don't, don't read, <laughs> exactly. Don't read, don't read newspapers. Don't listen to what no. any of that because it's I'm not sure that that's all actually true. <laughs> so, no, well, yeah, we, we we know it's not true and that goes down a whole different rabbit hole. Which, exactly, uh, yes, totally. Yeah. Which, 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 which is very interesting. And once you start going down it, there's no Absolutely, way back. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't just hope that it's going to work. It is actually going to work. We're going to mm. take the word hope out of that and it is yeah. going to be a benefit mm. to people yes, um, yeah, around yeah. there. So I hope um, everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you and join the Blue Pool Network or find out more, how do they do that? Um, so there is a website which is bluepoolnetwork.com. Um, on the website that you will see this gradually evolving over time and new things coming on. But at the moment, you can go into the library, you can find the information that I was talking about there. So which is continually growing at the moment, it is a fairly small library, but of course, over time, it would expand. Um, you can, you will see all the details of the affiliate team on there. Um, and so you can see who, who, who we are that's supporting us. Um, and and their, all of their information if you're interested. Um, in order to, if you want to be involved in coming along to the event at Bradbourne House on the 14th, if you go to the website and go onto the buy tickets page um, and then go down, you'll see that you've got the, there's a couple of different options there of different events, um, but you go to the Bradbourne House event and then you just buy the ticket for that. And um, it's £33 for the ticket. It's from 9.30 to, to 3 o'clock, including your lunch and everything else that's involved. It's actually quite a, it's a good, it's better than going to the pub and getting lunch. It's actually cheaper than doing that and you'll get a whole day out. <laughs> so, exactly. um, so, it's a, it's, so you can get a ticket there. If you're interested in the online membership um, and would like to be one of the first 500, I would suggest messaging me to, um, um, so that I can put you on the list and send out the link at the right time. Um, you can either contact me on Facebook at Sandra, Gen Sandra Jennings, or you can find a Blue Pool page. It's a Sandra at Blue Pool page, and there's a Blue Pool Network page. Um, alternatively, you can email me on Sandra at bluepoolnetwork.co.uk. Um, and if you email me, then I will make sure that you go on the list. Um, the list is building. So, but as soon as that, it'll be literally the first 100 profiles that get filled in. So um, once you're on the list on, on the 14th that night, I'm going to have a pre-ready email to send out. And, and after we've done the event, I will come out that evening and I will send that link through to you. OK, yeah, so it's exactly. basically the first 500 profiles that get. Completed. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the Bloomsbury's. You yeah, know, again, that's you can um, buy tickets. You can, buy tickets. Well. you can also buy the tickets for Bloomsbury's online as well. So, yeah, perfect. And um, um, what I'll do is I'll um, put the um, actual links in the comments after the show so that people can just literally click on them. Perfect. And, yeah. go, and can go, yeah. and can go yeah. straight there. 
So again, thank you everyone so much for watching and uh, um, and uh, um, you know your thoughts and your comments. And thank you both Sandra and Steve for sharing your wisdom. And Steve, thank you so much for being brave enough to share your story. It's so inspiring. So thank you so, so much um, for doing that. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step into your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me and we can arrange a free video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar and please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts and some discounts and again thank you everyone so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and want to be part of a community and network of support um, of supporting each other and of course if you are watching this on YouTube as always then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations as each subscription does help and I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. And again, thank you so much, Steve and Sandra. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.